purpose of this video is not to revise a recipe, but to revise a video of one of my recipes. I think that the most important recipe I have on YouTube or on my blog is the cereal bar recipe. And it was one of the very first videos I made, so I think I could make it better. Um, the cereal bars are something that would be very good to have in your diet because they can, the ingredients in them can help you to feel full longer and they are very good for your digestive system in that they can help remove things that you don't need like um, bad cholesterol and they can, the ingredients, which is basically whole grains, um, also can keep your blood sugar level and help you, um, as I said, to, to feel full longer. So it's a, a really good thing to have and they're high in fiber and you hear a lot about how important fiber is in your diet and how most of us don't get enough. And you know, you can buy cereal bars and granola bars, but for example, this Quaker granola bar has one gram of fiber and one gram of protein. So, I mean, it's a tasty snack, um, but it really isn't giving you the things that you need. Now, these cereal bars are made from Kashi Go Lean and Kellogg's All Brand Original. It has to be original. Um, just bear that in mind, okay? All Brand Original and Kashi Go Lean. It also has loose oat bran that you buy at a health food store, not cut oats or oatmeal or steel oats, but loose oat bran. It, um, I use egg substitute. I have a mixture of skim milk and water, so that you want about two cups of liquid, and it's up to you how much milk versus how much water you use. This is not about getting your calcium. You need calcium and you can get it in many different foods. This is mostly about getting fiber. So it doesn't really matter if you use more water than milk. What's the point there? Um, I'm using no sugar added applesauce, a quarter of a cup. And I told you about the egg beaters. And I use cinnamon. And I use Walden Farms, about a quarter cup of this syrup. And if you want to, you can put just a splash of um, a sugar-free vanilla syrup as well. So it's a very simple to make. Um, the oven is heating at 375. I like to use um, glass rectangular pans like this, or dishes, um, bakeware. Um, I think that's all I need to tell you right now. It's, I want you to understand that these are really high in protein and fiber. They've got lots of micronutrients from the oat bran and from the cereals, and there even is some iron and calcium and amino acids in this. So it's a very healthful and can be tasty snack, depending on how much of the syrup and cinnamon and things that you use. So to make it then, you use about one and three quarters cup of, you know what? Hold that thought, I think I made a mistake. About a cup and three quarters. So this is a two cup thing. That's what threw me. I was thinking this was um, a one cup. So Kashi Go Lean, one and three quarters cup of that, and then three cups of the All Brand Original. Look, I, I see I see that um, whole grain seal on my Kashi Go Lean box. So that's a very good sign. Um, now three cups of the All Brand. Have to be careful because I'm afraid the lid's going to come off. I am using a two cup measuring thing. All right, so that's all the cereal, and then a half a cup of loose oat bran. And some cinnamon. You can be relatively generous with your cinnamon if you like cinnamon. And a quarter cup, I said, of the sugar-free Walden, supposedly calorie-free, but since I'm using more than a serving size, I'm going to say it has 5 or 10 calories in it. Not that that matters too much. A quarter cup of applesauce. 
eighth of a cup of the egg beaters. And a splash of this vanilla. Now the most important thing is that before you add your fluid, make sure your oven's ready and your pan's here ready and you're good to go because it's cereal. It's going to absorb the moisture. So as soon as you get it all stirred up and the consistency that you like, you got to dump it in here and bake it. Don't leave it sitting on the counter. Um, my oven's ready. Here's my non-fat butter spray. I did it kind of generously. All right, so I've got two cups of liquid here. I'm not going to pour it all in at once because you can always add more, but you can't take it out. And I was hoping when I got this new plastic bowl that you'd be able to see better than that white one I used before. I wanted a glass bowl, but they didn't have one this size. Sometimes when I'm not making videos, I'll take this bowl right over to the uh, sink and just add water from the tap until it's the right consistency, not even measuring it out because I know what it should look like. But you would probably want to start with two cups um, the first time and then learn as you do it. And I recommend that you um, try these. I have a lot of people who have known me over the last five or ten years who eat these all the time now. And that's not just family members, it's running friends and co-workers too. Um, a lot of the times I make them for them, but I've got a few that are doing it themselves. It's really awesome. Um, don't add chocolate chips like one of my friends did. <laughs> Can you believe she told me? She did. Okay, so I think that's good. And it's also important how what you do after you pour it in here. So get it as moist as you like. I'm trying to hurry up so my video doesn't go over 10 minutes. And then you want to mash this down. And sometimes people will ask, well, how come yours look different than mine? It's because I match it down. And I have been known to just wet my hands and match it down or to use a spatula. And you might want to be mindful of the corners and the ends because when you go to cut them later, you might have some that seem bigger than others and you want them to be as uniform as possible. So I will bake this for 40 minutes. Um, the last place I lived, I baked it for 45 because the stove was different. So you might, they might come out too dry or too moist on you. You'll have to make an adjustment, but I think you don't want them too dry, so undercook them. If they come out very moist, though, and you've noticed that they're a little wet inside, do not leave them on the counter. I never do anyway. But if they're especially moist and you leave them out, they will, um, is rank the right word? I'm not sure, but they'll be sour. They'll sour on you, so don't do that. Okay, so I'm going to bake these for 40 minutes. Bake it for 40 minutes, it's not these yet. Um, and then what I like to do is let them cool at room temperature, and then I put them in my refrigerator for many hours or overnight, and um, try to push them away from the sides, and then flip them right onto my cutting board. And if you cut them in half, and then cut each half into 12 so that you have 24, you'll have 40 calories each. Um, if, and 40 calories each and about 3 grams of, wait a minute, I wrote it down. I had to do this big analysis before when I was getting a certificate in nutrition, so that's how come I can do this stuff. Thank God for that class. Two to three grams of protein, three to five grams of fiber. It depends because you can cut them into 16 pieces and they'll have the higher protein and fiber and they'll have 80 calories. Or I cut them in smaller but I eat two a day. So you're getting an awesome source of fiber and protein. And like I said, it helps. I believe it would help with your cholesterol and your blood sugar and your feeling full. And I'm basing that not because I've researched my cereal bars, but because I researched all the things that go into making my cereal bars. And um, here are some that I've had, that I made. Um, and I have them in the fridge and I, I nuke them. As my friends know, I gently warm them for about 20 seconds in the microwave. 